Good morning, Father Dardis, and welcome to this interview. Thank you so much. So the, the motto of the assembly is discerning the future of Jesuit higher education. Why is this sermon so essential to our institutions? I think it's essential because it has so much to do with a dream, dreaming big, dreaming audacious dreams, dreaming in a way that's, that, that sets us on fire. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there are, there, are, there are many kinds of dreams, but there are kind of dreams that are destructive. You think of the ideologies of Stalinism or Nazism. Mm -hmm. So we need to get in touch with, with God's dream, and that's what discernment is about, getting in touch with the dream of God for the world, and then, how do I say, aligning ourselves with God's dream. And then everything becomes easy because we're moving with the Holy Spirit. So dreaming, that's so key. And um, how do we dream to help dreaming students, staff, uh, collaborators, administrators? How can we inspire them to dream? Well, I think young people, we, Jesuits have always believed in young people. That's why we have schools and universities and why we run educational apostolates. So you set people free. You help to set people free so that they live with open hands and hearts. So many of us today are so pressured. We live kind of like this, all tight and tense, and we can't even think. We're running along, running along like this. So I found in my experience, when I worked with university students in Dublin, I found, yeah, you can, you can just present a few images, invite people, don't force people, present a vision, invite, and, and give, give small pathways of imagination. I think this is key. And here in the meeting, which has been very well run, there have been presentations and workshops and a lot of information. Mm -hmm. But I've seen people then, you can see little sparks. I can see people, ah this would work for me. And then they go back to their universities, go back to their institutions, and they, they play with these small sparks. So don't overwhelm people, a few ideas, a few sparks, and then the world can be, can be set on fire with hope. How would a discerning university, a discerning Jesuit higher education institution looks like? What is your advice? A discerning higher education institution would be agile, would be flexible, would have big dreams, my first point, would present ideas all the time to, to discern, to, okay, is this idea going to work for us in this situation with these people? So dreaming, discerning, and then agile, ready to move, not stuck in a rut from a 100 years ago or 50 years ago or even 20 years ago but really able to move. And how can we inspire our students to use this fundamental tool? I think it's not a tool as much as a promise. Yeah. Discernment is, I was praying this morning about the passage of the transfiguration of Jesus, where he goes up the mountain with Peter, James and John, and he's transfigured. And I think there are all these stories of transfiguration of people, of saints, from the past, but also modern day heroes, who when, you, when young people see their lives, they're inspired. So narratives of transfiguration, all of us want to be transfigured. And when you meet people who have this kind of glow of transfiguration, that they're in touch with something bigger, that they're living as free people, I think young people immediately want that. They want more of that. So in, in the Society of Jesus now, we're stressing more and more narratives, little narratives, short stories of transfiguration, of hope, of joy, uh, where we look at people and, and where we present models, people who can be attractive, people who show the way to salvation and give people a, a sense that there's more, life is more than about me, life is about solidarity, life is about giving and that there's hope. How do we bring the leadership teams in our institutions into this learning? I think you bring them gradually. Uh, always there are a few people like early adopters who really get the idea and are passionate. And then there are kind of skeptics who might be a bit cynical or grumbling. 
And they're important too, because they ask good questions. And then there's a middle group that, that are kind of maybe sitting on the fence a little bit. So you work with all of those, but especially the first group initially, and you, you support them. You don't let them get discouraged. Then you work with the second group, and they gradually get folded in. And then the third group, you, you, you listen to their questions. You listen. Listening is so important in discernment that people feel listened to. The Holy Spirit speaks through everyone, through everyone. And we can dismiss people and say, oh, this person, we can have a prejudice against this person or that person. No, listen to everybody. The Holy Spirit speaks through every single person. When I worked in Ireland, it was such an important advice I got. The Holy Spirit speaks through everyone. Lay people, Jesuits, women, men, small, small children even. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, listen. Father Dardis, thank you very much. You're welcome.